Hey, 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 you know what time it is? Woo! Okay, before we start, let's have a conversation real quick. Let's have a conversation, kids. And for all the adults in the room, for all of the children that watch Storytime with Chris on the YouTube channel, for all of my friends, let's talk real quick. I apologize for one of my lo locks is giving me a Superman um, <laughs> curl going on here, which... Thank God I have a widow's peak, but still. Anyway, that's not what we came here to talk about. What we came here to talk about is the recent success of the Disney Plus Obi-Wan Kenobi limited series that premiered last Friday with two episodes, and it is said to have been the most watched Disney Plus premiere show um, as of this recording, which doesn't surprise me. It's Obi-Wan Kenobi from the prequel films. Of course people go watch that. And Hayden Christensen is Anakin again. Well, more so Darth Vader. But still, of course people go watch. It's a little too hot. But what I came to talk about was the recent hate that has come out for the new um, villain that is on there. Her name is Reva, if I'm not mistaken. And she's a beautiful, melanated, dark-skinned black woman. I apologize because right now the actress's name is not popping into my head, so I do apologize. But there's been a lot of fan hate and critique from the Star Wars camp, and I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Even though I do love Star Trek as equally as Star Wars, I grew up with both. Shout out to Star Trek Voyager and shout out to Star Trek Deep Space Nine and Next Generation. Anyway, um, I love Star Wars. Me and my cousins and my brothers, we grew up watching and loving Star Wars. Star Wars is amazing. It is a sci-fi epic. But there can be such things as toxic fandom. And I recently shared a post from the Star Wars Facebook page in response to that. And it was a be it really poignantly got what I'm trying to say um, clear out into the world. Um, let me reiterate for those who are not able to understand and um, shattering people's disbelief. Guess what, people? Black and brown people can exist in the world of fantasy and science fiction and any other medium that we so choose to delve into. Because guess what? We do exist. We have existed and will continue to exist. Matter of fact, it's scientifically proven that all humanity originated from Africa. And then migrated on to different areas and melanin changes and lack thereof in certain regions of the earth. And that's how we get all these different ethnic groups. But let that be a lesson to you. That hate is not going to be tolerated. We got more bigger issues to deal with. Safer gun policy and the laws and controls for not just our children but for our citizens as a whole. We have corruption in the world of politics for senators who are being petulant and um, evil towards one another and are not willing to get things done because of ego. So I would like to politely say, if you have nothing nice to say, sweetie, don't say nothing at all. And I've mentioned this before. Three of my biggest, three of my biggest favorite, actually four of them I'm going to mention, Mercedes Lackey, Anne McCaffrey, Ursula K. McGuinn, Diane Wynne Jones. The reason why I mention those names is because those are some of the those four women are some of the biggest, if not some of the best, sci-fi slash fantasy writers of all time. And there are so many people who adapt their work and rarely, if ever, get it right. Specifically with Ursula K. McGuinn, who has been on record to say and has been interviewed that her characters in her world in the Tales of Earthsea books are people of color. Her main characters are people of color. Some of them are gender fluid. Some of them are gender neutral. And people constantly cast white Europeans in these roles when it was not made for y'all. People are getting up in arms for the new Lord of the Rings series that's happening on Amazon um, Prime, which honestly, y'all just could have rings of power, really. I mean, I guess the Tolkien estate was like, no, y'all can't use the Cimmerillion as the title because literally the story is set 2,000 years before the events of Lord of the Rings. 
But that's another conversation for another day. But people were really up in arms about the fact that they were introducing black elves. Black and brown elves. Oh, we can't have... Elves are black. Elves can be black. Why? Why? Because guess what? The beauty of fiction, the beauty of fantasy, the beauty of science fiction is that there are no rules. You, the writer, whoever wrote it, or you, the person who is developing a story like that, you make up the rules. There are no definitive rules. Just because you're used to a certain standard of something because you frequent certain artists doesn't mean that that's the definitive rule. There can be black elves. There can be black knights, which there are black knights in history. There's definitely been black samurai, black ninja. Uh, shout out to Yasuke, um, the black samurai under the tutelage and reign of Oda Nobunaga. Look it up. Um, there are black superheroes. There are black sci-fi heroes. There are black detectives. There are black and brown mermaids. There are black and brown elves. There are black and brown anything okay we exist we gonna be here and we deserve to be seen in any form of media we want this message is specifically to those people who are made uncomfortable by the fact that people of color exist and to all my kids of color who are watching this to your uh friends who are allies of you who may happen to be white i love you and i support you and if nobody else is gonna tell you you deserve to be seen your feelings are valid. You deserve to be in everything. Because that's how the world is and should be and will be. Fun fact. Why? Because I manifested that. Because I spoke that out into the universe. And here's the thing, y'all. If y'all want to... A lot of people would like to disguise their issues with the casting of this young woman in a main villainous role as oh her acting is bad i'm just not feeling this and that da, 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 da. it's a very pc way of disguising one's prejudice it has nothing to do with her acting ability it has nothing to do with her storyline has everything to do with the color of her skin something that she cannot help and that honestly should ha not have diddly squat to do with her performance on this show because guess what i i guarantee you this as the show continues with Obi-Wan Kenobi, this girl is probably going to be a very iconic and memorable, one of the iconic and memorable pieces of the series, besides other cool stuff that's coming out. So for all the haters who want to chime in because they want to be miserable and try to bring other people down, because misery loves company. Misery loves company. For those who want to continue to hate, you can do that by yourself. I'll be over here with the real world i'll be over here with the future i'll be over here with the with the kids who actually are gonna make awesome changes and awesome differences let it be known that when ruby rose left the series of batwoman on the cw um the young woman her name is jamila if i'm not mistaken um she was cast as the new kate kane on Batwoman for not one season but for two seasons and unfortunately that show got canceled amongst other DCCW shows that got canceled which that mostly stems from the Warner Brothers Discover merger that just recently happened and the changing of the guard with that so like I said black and brown people have been and can be and will be in the world of fantasy and science fiction and I suggest you be quiet and get used to it if you have nothing nice to say don't say nothing at all Like I said, I said what I said. And no more of that negative proverbial labor. We are getting to somebody who knows what kindness is. Somebody who knows what compassion is. Somebody who would love on somebody regardless of what their skin color look like. And that is Anne of Green Gables. But like I said, y'all. We need to realize that there are no definitive rules. If I wanted to make, if I wanted to make a black superhero with a pink afro and carried a samurai sword and had jetpack high heels and was a male character who is married with two kids, I could do that because there are no rules. 
You can literally do what you want in the world of fiction, because that's the point. There are no limits. There are no boundaries you can't touch. So for those who want to talk smack about this young lady in Obi-Wan series, y'all can go somewhere else, because she's going to be successful. I speak that into the universe, okay? I said what I said. You know what? We're not here for that. We're not here for that negativity. We don't know her. We don't sip on that tea. We, we don't do that. Let me clean my glasses because I'm notoriously having to clean my glasses. But like I said, you do not have to watch these videos when they go live. You're more than welcome to watch them on the YouTube channel when I upload them, which I know that I need to upload a few episodes to the YouTube channel, which will be done later tonight, considering that I'm off tomorrow. Um, I love every single one of y'all. It's okay to have an opinion. It's okay to not like something. Like for me, and I know I'm going to catch trouble for this, I'm not a huge fan of... A lot of the MCU stuff. I said it. I said what I said. But just because I don't like it does not mean that it's not good. Just because you may not like something does not mean that it's not good. It could be better for somebody else. And that's okay. It's okay to have a deferring opinion. What is problematic is when your opinion causes physical and emotional harm to marginalized groups who do not deserve it. That's the problem. So I said what I said. And Matthew, I see you watching. I appreciate you. <laughs> All right. So Anne is now going to be staying at Green Gables officially, as per Matthew and Marilla's um, agreement with one another. And we're going to see what happens. And she starts to settle in her new life at Green Gables. Chapter 7. Anne says her prayers. When Marilla took Anne to bed that night, she said stiffly, Now, Anne, I noticed last night that you threw your clothes all over the floor when you took them off. That is a very untidy habit, and I can't allow it at all. As soon as you take off any article of clothing, fold it neatly and place it on the chair. I haven't any use for at all for little girls who aren't neat. My apologies, y'all. I had to make sure I turned my notifications off. I was so harrow mind in my mind last night that I didn't think about my clothes at all, said Anne. I'll fold them nicely tonight. They always made us do that at the asylum. Half the time, though, I'd forget. I'd be in such a hurry to get into bed nice and quiet and imagine things. You'll have to remember a little better if you stay here, admonished Marilla. There, that looks something like. Say your prayers now and get into bed. I never say any prayers, announced Anne. Marilla looked horrified. Astonishment. Why, Anne, what do you mean? Were you never taught to say your prayers? God always wants the little girls to say their prayers. Don't you know who God is, Marilla? Excuse me, Anne, sorry. <laughs> Which I also need to clarify that regardless of anybody's religious affiliation or faith-based affili affiliation, this is a story for everybody. God is whatever you want it to be, whether you choose to recognize that or not. And there is no definitive way of what God can be for you, okay? God is what you make God to be, because God is everything. If you choose to believe that, and it's okay if you choose not, but respect those who do, okay? God is a spirit, infinite, eternal, and unchangeable in his being wisdom power holiness justice goodness and truth responded Anne politely and promptly and glib glibly marilla looked rather relieved so you do know something there thank goodness you're not quite a heathen where did you learn that oh at the asylum sunday school they made us learn the whole catechism i like it pretty well there's something splendid about some of the words infinite, eternal, and unchangeable. Isn't that grand? It has such a role to it, just like a big organ playing. You couldn't quite call it poetry, I suppose, but it sounds a lot like it, doesn't it? We're not talking about poetry, Anne. We're talking about saying your prayers. Don't you know it's a terrible wicked thing not to say your prayers every night? I'm afraid you're a very bad little girl. You'll find it easier to be bad than good if you had red hair, said Anne reproachfully. People who haven't red hair don't know what trouble is. 
Mrs. Thompson told me that God made my hair red on purpose, and I never cared about him since. And some, and anyways, I'd always be too tired at night to bother saying prayers. People who have to look after twins can't be expected to say their prayers. Now, do you honestly think they can? Marilla decided that Anne's religious training must be begun at once. Plainly, there was no time to be lost. You must say your prayers while you are under my roof, Anne. Why, of course, if you want me to, assented Anne cheerfully. I'd do anything to oblige you, but you'll have to tell me what to say for this once. After I get to bed, I'll imagine out a real nice prayer to say always. I believe that it would be quite interesting now that I come to think of it. You must kneel down, said Marilla in embarrassment. Anne knelt on Marilla's knee and looked up gravely. Why must people kneel down to pray? If I really wanted to pray, I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd go on to a great big field all alone into the deep, deep woods, and I'd look up into the sky, up, up, up into the lovely sky that looks as if there was no end to its blueness. Then I'd just feel a prayer. Well, I'm ready. What am I to say? Which I tend to agree with Anne. Marilla felt more embarrassed than ever. She had intended to teach Anne the childish classic, Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep, but she had, as I've told you, the glimmerings of a sense of humor, which is simply another name for a sense of the fitfulness of things, and it certainly occurred to her that the simple little prayer, sacred to white-robed childhood lisping at motherly le knees, was entirely unsuited to this freckled witch of a girl who knew and cared nothing about God's love, since she had never had it translated to her through the medium of human love. You're old enough to pray for yourself, Anne, she said finally. Just thank God for your blessings and ask him humbly for the things you want. Well, I'll do my best, promised Anne, bearing her face in Marilla's lap. Gracious Heavenly Father, that's the way the ministers say it in church, so I suppose it's all right a private prayer, isn't it? She interjected, lifting her head for a moment. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank thee for the white way of delight and the lake of shining waters and body of the Snow Queen. I'm really extremely grateful for them. And that's all the blessings I can think of just now to thank thee for. As for the things I want, they're so numerous that I would take a great deal of time to name them all, so I will only mention the two most important. Please let me stay at Green Gables, and please let me be good-looking when I grow up. I remain yours respectfully. Anne Shirley. There, did I do it all right? She asked eagerly, getting up. I could have made it much more flowery if I had a little more time to think it over. Poor Marilla was only preserved from complete collapse by remembering that it was not ir irreverence, but simply spiritual ignorance on the part of Anne that was responsible for this extraordinary petition. She tucked the child up in bed, mentally vowing that she would be taught a prayer the very next day, and was leaving the room with the light when Anne called her back. I've just thought of it now. I should have said, Amen, in place of yours respectfully, shouldn't I? The way the ministers do. I'd forgotten it, but I thought a prayer should be finished off in some way, so I put it in the other. Do you suppose it'll make any difference? I, I, I don't suppose it will, said Marilla. Go to sleep now like a good child. Good night. I could say good night tonight with a clear conscience, said Anne, cuddling luxuriously down among her pillows. Marilla retreated to the kitchen sat the candle firmly on the table, and glared at Matthew. Matthew Cuthbert, it's about time somebody adopted that child and taught her something. She's next door to a perfect heathen. Will you believe that she never said a prayer in her life till tonight? I'll send to the man's tomorrow and borrow the Peep of Day series. That's what I'll do, and she'll go to Sunday school just as soon as I can get some suitable clothes made for her. I foresee that I shall have my hands full. <laughs> well, well. You we can't get through this life without any share of trouble. I've had a pretty easy life of it so far, but my time has come at last, and I suppose I'll just have to make the best of it. And that's where we will end for tonight. And I do apologize for my longer intro. I just had to get that off my chest, y'all. And I want to say this directly to the children. Everybody on this earth, no matter what they look like, how they dress, how they talk, what they like, what their hobbies are, everybody in this world deserves respect and kindness of the most genuine sense. Here's a perfect example. 
Well, you can't really see her because this cup is a bit old. But Belle is a perfect example of looking beyond the differences of a person without prejudice and with compassion and kindness and patience. Learn how to be that, kids. Please do not let these hateful adults, not all of them, not all of them, but some of them, who don't know how to lead with kindness, don't let them warp your vision of the world. The world is beautiful. The world is huge. But the world is also dark. And the world is also full with mean-spirited people. But it won't be like that forever. I assure you. Hear my voice with your heart, not just with your ears, okay? The world can be and will be a beautiful place if you work hard and try to do your best to pass kindness along. That's how life can get better. If we all learn how to pass kindness along and all get past our prejudices and petulant pettiness. That's kind of a uh, alliteration, but still. I love all of you. Even the ones I don't know. I love you all. Be good to each other. Have a good night.